All right, time to go teach. Hello and welcome to this next episode of Tutor Tutors, continuing on the unit of the cell. Today we are looking at the specific characteristic of life that is maintaining homeostasis. So let's get started. The first target of the day is to recognize the factor that makes it difficult to maintain homeostasis. So what is actually going on? What does a cell have to do to maintain homeostasis? What does it have to fight against to maintain homeostasis? Next, identify which molecules can actually just pass through the phospholipid bilayer, and thus the cell can't really stabilize that. The cell can't control those molecules too well. But then to describe the ways that a cell can control which molecules enter and which molecules can leave the cell. So let's get started. The first thing I think that we have to recognize is that we say it's maintaining homeostasis. That is a characteristic of life, maintaining this stable internal environment. And the fact is that the cell has to maintain that stable internal environment. And that means that it has to actually fight against some force, some factor that if the cell didn't actively work against would mean it would not have a stable internal environment. So what specific factor could that be? And that is diffusion. So here's the, what we are going to be looking at is how molecules move. Because we have to remember cells, they're really small. And so the way that molecules move are going to have a very, very large impact upon our cells. A simple example of this is I take a spoonful of sugar and I just drop that sugar within my coffee cup. Over time, if I don't stir it, if I don't do anything to this coffee cup, those molecules of sugar will spread out. That is just the natural order of things because the molecules of sugar are going to move randomly based upon actually, in this case also, the molecules of water that are moving around randomly within that coffee cup. And as they are moving around randomly, they are going to spread out. They are going to go from the one area of what we would consider high concentration to an area of lower concentration. They are going to spread out equally throughout the entire coffee cup. And over time, they can continue to move, but they're still going to stay approximately the same distance from each other. It's going to stay the same concentration throughout, right? So our molecules are going to spread through this random motion. That is called diffusion. This process is something that the cell has to deal with. Now, this is a good thing and a bad thing. The cell is going to use diffusion to its advantage, but it also has to fight against it in different ways. So again, what is diffusion? Well, it's a passive transport of molecules. In other words, it requires no energy input at all. Diffusion will happen just by really the temperature energy, the heat energy that happens to be available to it. So just because molecules are in motion, based upon the fact that there is temperature, they're not at absolute zero, that means that they are going to move around. They are going to naturally spread out. They're going to do what we call go move down the concentration gradient. And what that means is that molecules in a very tight concentration will spread out until they are approximately uniformly separated. They're going to go from a high concentration to the lower concentration areas, and then they will spread out approximately equitably throughout the container that they are in. Once they're spread out equitably, they are re referred to as being in dynamic equilibrium. They call it dynamic equilibrium because the molecules are still in motion. They aren't going to stop moving, but they can't spread out any more than they've already spread out. So they are going to stay at approximately the same distances from each other, 
but still moving around constantly. And so it's because of that constant motion, we call it dynamic, and because they are approximately spread out equitably throughout the entire container, we call it equilibrium. We put the two together, that's how we get dynamic equilibrium. And that is what happens with diffusion. Diffusion is going to be molecules that are spreading out over the space. This is what happens when someone puts on a little bit of perfume inside of a room, and then you might not be next to that person. You could be farther away in the room, but you could, over a period of time, you'll start to smell that perfume. The reason is because those particles, those molecules, are spreading out throughout the room. And so they're going from that area of high concentration, where they were sprayed, to an area of lower concentration where you happen to be standing in the room. When we add a membrane into this mix, we call this simple diffusion. So I'm actually going to remove all the organelles because I'm not really concerned about them right now. We're just thinking about the membrane itself. And so the first thing is to recognize that for the cell, small Nonpolar molecules, they can just simply diffuse right across that membrane. It's just like wind going through a screen. The holes in the screen are so large that the wind can just go right through it. Well, in the same way, the holes in this phospholipid bilayer are so large that as it works out, the small nonpolar molecules, they can go through. So they can pass through and they would form this equilibrium through it. But that's only if they are extremely small and there is no charge. If the molecules have charge, they can't pass through the phospholipid bilayer. If the molecules are large, they also can't pass through the phospholipid bilayer. And by large, I'm not talking about hundreds of atoms in size. I'm talking like five atoms in size, six atoms in size. That's when we start to get very large. A molecule of glucose, for example, which happens to be 24 atoms in size, that is a very large molecule. It can't just pass through the phospholipid bilayer. So these large or these polar molecules are molecules that have a charge. They can't pass through the phospholipid bilayer. And so as they spread out, well, they, they can't spread to within the cell. They can't get into the cell, not on their own. So the cell has ways to allow for some molecules to be able to diffuse across its membrane. So molecules that the cell would want to have enter into the membrane, it has a little way to allow for that process to occur. And that is by putting in protein channels. It can have a protein channel within its plasma membrane, which will allow specific molecules to go through. And so in this case, here are protein channels. They can allow some of these yellow molecules to pass through. And so they can just move on through, but only through the protein channel. These molecules cannot pass through the phospholipid bilayer. They have to pass through the protein channel or they are not getting to within inside the cell. But we should also recognize that these protein channels, these are extremely specific. So even though I have this other protein channel right here, these yellow molecules, they can't pass through this protein channel specifically. So they would just bounce, bounce off because they can't go through that specific area. They can't use that channel because that channel is not made for that specific molecule. It's very much like enzymes. Remember, enzymes had that active site where only the specific molecule could fit within that active site based upon polarity and shape. Well, these channels are just like that. Only the specific molecule that they are for can actually go through that channel. Some of these channels are even one directional so that molecules can only go either in or out of that specific channel. And that's why we call the plasma membrane as being selectively permeable because some small molecules can actually pass through. Some of these nonpolar molecules can pass through, but the larger ones that, or the molecules that happen to have a charge, those 
they require these protein channels that have to be specific to the actual particle to get in. And so the cell controls which of those can get in and which of those cannot. The larger molecules or the ones that are charged, those only can enter if the cell, first off, makes the protein channel for that specific molecule. And secondly, if it actually has that channel open or not. Sometimes these channels could have a closure to them. And so they could be what we call gated channels, where a molecule might have to bind to it to allow for it to open up. And so that's why we call the plasma membrane a selectively permeable membrane. It selects for what is able to go in and what is able to go out when it comes down to large and polar or charged particles. So it controls those. Those are regulated based upon those protein channels. But there's another type of transport that is called active transport. Now, those previous examples were all passive transport. That was where the cell didn't have to use up any of its own energy because the molecules were moving down the concentration gradient, which is what molecules naturally were going to do. But the cell can actually push molecules against the concentration gradient. And it does that using active transport, which is going to require energy. The first thing that we could say is it could use chemical energy. That's going to be using a specific molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. We will talk much more about ATP when we get to cellular respiration and photosynthesis. So how do cells end up generating the chemical energy that they use? The other way that that cell could actually use energy is it could use the energy in a concentration gradient. And we're gonna show what that is in just a second. So first, looking at active transport, in this case, active transport could be using a protein pump. And if it just pumps the molecules against the concentration gradient, so we can see that we have a lot of our yellow molecules within the cell. We don't have many that are outside the cell. But this protein pump is going to pump those yellow molecules into the cell. That is using chemical energy, and that would be active transport. What we could also have is the cell use this concentration gradient. Now we have a very high concentration of yellow molecules within the cell. We have a low concentration of our maroon molecules within the cell. We have a concentration of the maroon molecules outside the cell. So naturally, the yellow molecules are going to move out of the cell. And that force of the concentration gradient for the yellow molecules can be used, it can be coupled, we would say, to pull one of our maroon molecules out of the cell as well from its area of low concentration to the area of high concentration. So one of our yellow molecules can pull a maroon molecule along with it. The yellow molecule going down its concentration gradient and the maroon molecule going against its concentration gradient. The yellow molecule going from high concentration to low concentration, the maroon molecule going from low concentration toward the high concentration. It can get pulled against its concentration gradient Another thing that can happen is bulk transport. And bulk transport is really this cool process that takes place. It's either going to be something called endocytosis or exocytosis. Endocytosis is the bulk transport of bringing something into the cell. Endo meaning within, exo meaning without. So exo is going to have something exit the cell. Specifically, we could have phagocytosis or pinocytosis for endocytosis. Uh, phagocytosis is if a cell is going to consume another cell. Pinocytosis is, in a sense, the cell drinking. So how this works out is, in this case, we are going to take this little bacterium, so this prokaryotic cell. Prokaryotes are much smaller than eukaryotic cells. This prokaryotic cell is going to get engulfed by our eukaryotic cell 
And the way that works is it's sort of that eukaryotic membrane pinches in, and then a piece of the membrane actually will come off and it will form this structure that we call a vesicle. For exocytosis, the exact process will happen in reverse, where a bunch of molecules can be removed from the cell. This is typically when we're thinking about removing waste from a cell, or if the cell is trying to send a signal to another cell. And in summary then, cells Look, they have to maintain homeostasis because that is one of the characteristics of life. And one of the, of the factors that they have to maintain homeostasis against is this process of diffusion which takes place, which is molecules that are going to be spreading out, going down their concentration gradient. And how they are able to end up controlling for that a little bit is because they have a selectively permeable membrane. They have these protein channels that allow for some molecules to enter, for some molecules to leave, and they also perform active transport where they are going to pump molecules out or they're going to pump molecules into the cell going against the concentration gradient. All of that is how a cell ends up maintaining homeostasis. That's it for this time. Be awesome, stay awesome.